thanks for coming out uh, to this third edition of the Dragon Dialogues speaker series, which is part of Glenelg Country School's 60th anniversary celebration. Tonight's featured speaker is Dr. Harris Cooper, currently the chairman of the Department of Psychology and Neuroscience at Duke University. Professor Cooper has been a visiting scholar at Stanford University, Harvard University, the University of Oregon, and the Russell Sage Foundation in New York. He is widely recognized as the leading expert on homework, which he has been studying for over 25 years. Uh, maybe some of that work was actually done at home, uh, I assume. And um, he has appeared on numerous television shows, including The Oprah Winfrey Show, NBC Dateline. He's widely published, currently working on such topics as modified school calendars and the impact of summer school. We are most familiar with his book, The Battle Over Homework, which we have widely read here in school. Um, some of us will remember our screening of the film The Race to Nowhere a few years ago and the subsequent discussion that emanated from that uh, showing. Still questions and debates center around this topic. How much is too much? How do variations in homework impact achievement? What should the role of parents be? To shed some light on this perennially controversial topic, it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Cooper to Ghana Country School. Uh, 
Um, not really quickly. You got it. I, I have to make this up a little bit. Um, but I do want a lot of time for conversation and, and questions. Uh, but I'm going to try and answer a set of questions. Um, what are public attitudes? Let's talk about what are potential positive and negative effects? What might influence someone's effectiveness? Is homework actually improved achievement? Uh, what are some research based findings suggesting how homework can be more effective? And then if we have time, we can go over tips for teachers and parents and students. Okay? Okay, these are the research references. This is what I call the credibility manipulation. Okay, you don't have to look at that if you don't want to. Um, definition of homework, I'm going to be talking about assignments um, given by teachers that are meant to be done at home. Um, sometimes homework is done in study hall. That's fine. They're supposed to be done outside of class. I'm not going to talk about extracurricular activities. I'm study courses tutoring. Those are different topics with different literatures. Um, the amazing, one of the amazing things about homework um, is um, until the um, arising of the internet, and I don't know that it's all that much different, but it's a little bit different, uh, public attitudes towards homework, if you read about them in the media, um, went through a 30-year cycle. And it went from kids ought to be doing more homework to about 15 years later, kids ought to be doing less homework. It's generational. About 15 years later, kids ought to be doing more, less, more. It started out with uh, my grandparents who believed that uh, uh, the mind was a muscle, and the more you exercised it, the better it worked. And the best way to do exercise was to take it home with you and learn through rote. Okay? Um, homework then fell out of favor, especially in the 1960s. A lot like today, where there were concerns about um, stress on kids, and you know this was the time of the hippies, and, and um, everybody was supposed to be laid back. Then we had the early 1980s. Um, uh, some of you may remember uh, we were really worried about Japan. Um, we were worried uh, about um, economic uh, competitiveness. We had a very important um, uh, uh, report that came out, which was called The Nation at Risk, that changed the way people thought. Homework came back in. Okay? And then, right around the turn of the century, um, the reaction set in again. Um, and uh, the New York Times really kicked it off, or it was a uh, tipping point, where they had um, a lead article in the early uh, 2000s to their education supplement, uh, which was called Homework uh, Too Much, Too Soon, or Too Little, Too Late. And the concern um, uh, was raised about uh, the amount of pressure that was being placed on children. Okay? Today, if you go and you look for an attitude towards homework, you can find anyone you want. Um, you go online, you can find somebody who agrees with you. You can find a publication that, that, that supports one position or the other. So that trending seems to have uh, diminished more recently. One of the interesting things uh, 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 about uh, homework issues is that when you do a nationally representative survey, we find that really the national sense about homework doesn't change all that much. What changes is the, the media's um, depiction of it, okay? And for different uh, groups within society, there can be different um, perceptions of, of, of homework, okay? So when uh, the MetLife Foundation did one survey, not too many years ago. Associated Press did another. One of the things they did was they asked parents, how much homework does your child bring home? Uh, too much, too little, or just the right amount? About three in five parents said just the right amount. One said too much and one said too little. And that's not an unusual circumstance. Okay? People who have studied the actual amount of homework that is assigned uh, since the 1950s, since Dwight Eisenhower was 
president finds that there has been very little change, actually, okay, until recently. And it, it has occurred in two places. One is in early childhood, where issues about eating children have become a very, a, a very close point of interest. Okay? And the notion that kids need to start reading early has influenced the amount of homework that, that uh, primary school kids get. Uh, a couple with that has been the accountability with end of school grades and the importance of third grade and how many schools and communities look at third grade reading and math scores. That has placed a great deal of pressure on educators. At the same time, at the very upper levels, at the, in the high school level, there has been not recently. Okay? And they're not large changes, but at, at the high school levels, what you find is the number of kids who are taking honors and advanced placement classes, do you know what those are? Right? The number of kids who are taking them and the number that they are taking is increasing. And as that happens, there are set curricula and set assignments in a lot of these courses that require that 45 minutes a night. So one of the things that's happening at the high school level is the variability is changing. So there are a lot of kids getting lots of homework, and then there are other kids in inner city schools who are, uh, whose teachers have given up on the practice entirely. Because they don't do it. So while the mean may have gone up just a little bit, one of the things that happened, that's happened is that there's a spread, okay, at those high school levels. Okay, uh, Nick News did a, um, a survey and they asked their uh, uh, tweeners um, uh, the 10 things they hate most about school. And homework came in second. Okay, they're trying really hard to move up to first, right? Okay. Okay. Why do people do homework? What are supposedly the positive um, effects of homework? Well, the obvious ones are the immediate achievement. Okay, we want kids to learn um, uh, better. We want them to understand material better. If they practice it more, they're going to learn it better. Um, but there are also uh, long-term academics. And one of the things that proponents of homework will tell you is that they, kids learn how to learn during leisure time. Um, it may improve attitudes towards school if it's done correctly, and especially study habits and study skills. There are also non-academic benefits, um, self-direction, time management, and so on. Can you read the comment? These are, as you can imagine, homework is a, um, is a, for all the family cartoons at the back of your newspaper, um, uh, uh, homework issues um, have a tragic common sense about them. Okay. Uh, greater parental appreciation and involvement in school. What about the negative effects? Anything can stay rewarding for only so long. If we are asked to do the same thing over and over again, you know, they used to do a version of therapy with cigarette smoke, even. Okay? So if, for how long can you do academic material um, and find the reward? Um, also, the opponents will tell you that it denies access to uh, learning in other, in other contexts, which can be very important soccer or the scouts, etc. Um, these teach very important life skills. And if homework crowds those things out, it's not in the child's best interest. The same way that, um, uh, it's kind of interesting to look at these things because it's two sides of the same coin and about the positives and the negatives. The same way parents can learn about what's going on in school um, and communicate their ideas to, to uh, children um, they can also interfere, okay? There's something that's called instructional interference. When a parent tries to teach something to a kid in a different way than it's being taught in school. And 
there's my first Emily story. She was heading off to uh, preschool at the time when I was working on, on uh, some of this material. And I came running down the steps one day, and she's sitting on the bottom step, and she's trying to tie her shoe. And we've got, to, we've got to get her to school, we're getting late. So I sit down beside, behind her, and I, and I start to tie her shoe. And, and little did I know at that point that there are two different ways to tie your shoes, right? Yeah, there's the double loop way, and then there's the crisscross way, okay? And I know the crisscross way, and she looked at me and she said, Dad, that's not the way I'm learning how to do it. And I realized that this was a perfect example of parental uh, uh, interference and structural interference. So I told her, Emily, you do it the way you're being taught how to do it in school. And after school today, we'll take you to the mall and get your sneakers with the Velcro. <laughs> and, and that'll be the end of that. Okay. Um, another thing is cheating. Okay. The, we, we, people are concerned that one of the things homework does is it teach, teaches kids how to move well, how to cheat. That uh, Bart uh, gets Millhouse to do his homework. Even worse than that, um, Homer does the homework for Bart and then is insulted when he only gets a date. Okay. And, there, uh, uh, and all of these issues are serious, but this, the notion of differences between high and low achievements is very important, especially when it's related to economics. The same assignment, I'm not going to tell you anything you don't know, the same assignment that uh, goes home. Goes home. When it goes home to different homes, it can have very different effects. And certainly, um, when there are different resources at home, um, a kid who has more resources at home is going to benefit. And that could make differences between high and low achievers, between high and low socioeconomic statuses, um, um, increase. Okay, factors that might influence the effects of homework, student characteristics, what's the subject matter, what's the grade level, we're going to talk about a bunch of these in a minute. Um, assignment characteristics, yes it matters what, what's being, what skill area is being utilized, degree of individualization, some assignments are, are here to be done by yourself and other assignments are meant for groups to complete together. Choice, amount of homework, we'll talk a little bit about that. Its purposes, whether it has completion deadlines, in social context, where it's done, whether there's assistance given, does with it when it comes back. What it is we're trying to influence. Okay. Does homework improve academic achievement? We did a literature review, and I'm not going to go into this, where we did our best to find everything that was out there, not the stuff that would confirm an initial position or, or disconfirm a position, but to find everything that was out there? And the answer to the question is yes, it does. Okay? In fact, uh, on the unit test, which means the test at the end of a, of a unit in a classroom, in those studies where they manipulated homework, where some kids got homework and some of the kids who got homework, 
scored better than 73% of the kids on that unit test in the classroom that didn't get home. Okay? If you looked at it on a, a, as a normal curves, that's what the normal curves would look like. Meaning that that shade, the shaded area is 73% of, of the students in the no homework class. If you look at it as a grade on what's a pretty difficult grading curve, okay, it's about um, half a grade from a, uh, from a C <coughs> to a B minus. Not a C plus, but a B minus. So I guess it's third to the It's about two thirds of the grade. Now that's a difficult curve, okay? Um, and it would be in a different place uh, for different kids. But it sort of is meant to give you a sense of what the impact might be, okay? It's also the case that if, you're, if your child is in the middle of the class and everybody is getting homework, they'll still be in the middle of the class. Okay, but if they were the only kid that would come, they would probably uh, surpass about 23% of their class by doing the work at home. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, skip that. Uh, does homework relate differently to different achievement methods? <coughs> I couldn't find it. The unit test one was the big one because that was that dealt with the with the. Uh, uh, studies in which homework was manipulated. If you look at, at broad achievement level uh, questions, that kind of, uh, you know, bigger, broader um, kinds of measures, you find that they tend to be more reliable because they tend, tend to be standardized tests, but they also cover more material. So one thing helps, it helps increase the reliability of the effect. The other thing Broadness of it helps to decrease it, and it doesn't—it it doesn't really change that much from what a teacher's um, grades might be, which can include things other than achievement, uh, like effort, like improvement, and things like that. Okay, uh, does grade level matter? Yes, it does. When we looked at the correlations, now these are correlations, so correlations don't mean causation. So sometimes it might be that homework is causing achievement. In other instances, it might be that achievement is causing the homework. Okay? But when people have correlated the amount of homework that kids say they do or teachers say they assign um, with how well the child is doing in school, the, the, um, in the um, elementary school grades, in your lower school, you're not going to find the big difference. Okay. There are there are studies that show that 